Hello, class. This lesson, we're going to learn how to figure out the area of a triangle with trigonometry. So once again, here's Sokotoa. Make sure you have these memorized. And in our opening exercise, we have three triangles. I'd like you to figure out the area of each triangle if you can. And if you can't, I want you to describe what else you need to know in order to calculate its area. So in the first two, they give us a base and a height. So we can just use our formula, 1 half base times height, and we get 30 and 80 square units. Now the last one, they don't give us a height. So looks like we don't have enough information to figure out its area. We just have two bases. Could we figure out the missing information using any of the tools we have for this last one? No, we really can't. You don't know any side lengths uh, for the third one. You don't know any angles. We really need some more information there. So that's what we're going to learn about today. So in this example, they give us three sides. Can we figure out the area? Well, we don't have a height. We still only have those three bases. But let's do something like we did before with similar right triangles. Let's drop an altitude to the longest side. And so if we draw an altitude from h down to 15, we end up with two small right triangles. Now, in this case, they're not similar, but we can still use uh, some properties we have of right triangles because we have those two small ones. So we're going to call this distance here x. That must be 15 minus x since the whole thing's 15. And let's call the height h. Now, how can we figure out the height? Well, what can we do with these two right triangles? What theorem can we apply? We can apply the Pythagorean theorem. So I want you to write two expressions, or two equations, I'm sorry, using these uh, variables and numbers and figure out uh, how you could solve this. So hopefully you wrote two equations that look like these. And we want to solve for x. So if we could get both of these equal to h or h squared, we could set them equal to each other and solve for x. So that's what we're going to do. Let's isolate h squared on both of these. And now these are equal, so we can use substitution, or the transitive property, whatever you want to call it in this case, to say that these two are equal to each other. And we can square this binomial right here. And we can distribute that negative in front of the parentheses, right? There's that one there. So it's going to flip all the signs. And we can solve this. What happens when we add x squared to both sides? Those cancel out. Simplify, combine the like terms here, we get this equation. So add 81 to both sides, divide by 30, and we get 13 thirds for x. So that must mean that the longer one is 32 thirds, right? Subtract that from 15. And so now, how can we figure out what the height is? Well, we have this nice equation over here for h squared, so let's plug in for x and then uh, simplify that and take the square root so we can figure out what h is. So when we substitute, we end up with 49 minus 169 over 9 which gives us h squared equal to 272 over 9. So we take the square root of both sides there. And we end up with this fraction. And 16 is a perfect square factor of 272. And the square root of 16 is 4. So we get 4 squared of 17 over 3. And now we can plug into our formula for area. So we have the height now is this number. So 1 half the base times the height. We simplify this, and we end up with 10 times the square root of 17. Right, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 2 times 5, 10. So what if we had just a triangle where we don't know the side lengths? How can we write an equation that describes its area? Well, we already know the formula for the area of a triangle is 1 half. The base times the height, and in this case, the base would be a. So now we're going to apply some of our properties of real numbers and rewrite this in a way that might be more helpful. So let's look at the steps and describe what you see there. So here's our formula. And we are going to multiply by b over b. And b over b is just 1. We know b can't be 0 because b is a length. So we, this is a valid step we can do. 
small duplicate of identity. And now we're going to apply a property and switch the positions of B and H. Which property is this? This is the commutative property of multiplication. And why is this equation helpful? Well, what's special about H over B? How can we rewrite that? And here's a hint. Think about this angle theta over here. What is H over B equal to? Well, H over B is just opposite over hypotenuse for that angle, so it must be sine. So now we have this new formula for area, which is equivalent to our original one. So if this is the area of a triangle, which part of this expression is the height? Remember, the original um, formula is 1 half base times height. So the height would be, oops, the height would be b times the sine of theta. That's going to give us the height here, h, the opposite side. A is still the base, and 1 half is still the 1 half that's in front of the, uh, the, the beginning of the formula. It's just the b times the sine of theta is the new part. But all it means is the height. So here we have three of the triangles we've been looking at. And how, do they, how are they different? Well, the first one, we couldn't find the area. And the second one, over here, we found the area since we had three sides we could use Pythagorean theorem. And then going to the last one, all we needed were two sides, and this angle in between is going to let us figure out the area. So the last formula is nice in that you only need two sides and an angle. You don't have to use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the height. So here's an example. I'd like you to try to draw a picture of what's going on in this picture and figure out what else we need to know in order to figure out the area of this plot of land. Well, we only have two sides. So as we saw before, we could have a third side. You would measure it. We could use Pythagorean theorem. Or he could measure the angle in between the two side lengths that he knows. So fill in the rest of your diagram based on the information that is right here. So we have an included angle that is 30 degrees. What's the area? Let's see if we can solve this problem now. So in my diagram, here is the triangular plot of land, 30 degree angle over here. And we want to figure out the area. So let's use 1 half AB times the sine of theta. Sometimes you see it's written as a sine of C. This is the, the uh, angle in between the two sides. And now you just plug it into your calculator. And we know sine of 30 is 1 half as well, so this works out nicely. So make sure you're in degree mode if you want to plug this in the calculator. So 1 half or 0 0.5 times 1,700 times 500 times the sine of 30 degrees. And there we go. 212,500. So here's an example of a surveyor measuring the different uh, shapes, uh, the different dis dimensions on a triangular plot of land. I'd like you to draw a diagram that describes this first. Label all the lengths and angles appropriately. So here is my triangle. So now, the two people involved here, the real estate developer and the surveyor, each calculated the area, and they got about the same answer. So I'm going to show you the diagrams that they used, and I'd like you to calculate the area of the triangle by using the formula that we've been using this lesson, 1 half AB times the sine of theta. So here are the two diagrams that they used. Same triangle, we just redrew it with the relevant information. And use the formula to figure out the area of each one. So if you use the formula here, you end up with these two equations. And on the left-hand side, we get about uh, 6,128,356. On the right-hand side, 6,162,893. We're talking about feet, so those would be square feet. 
So those numbers are close, but they're not exactly the same. So why, what could account for that difference? What was going on in this problem? Well, the triangle we drew isn't perfect. The differences in the area is, uh, is due to the approximations that they made when doing the measurements. So in a perfect world, if you had a triangle with the exact, exact angles and side lengths, then we would get the same answer. But unfortunately, in this case, the tools weren't that precise. And here's one final example where we're going to find the area. Uh, but this time, we're going to use a different strategy. So I'd like you to think about how you can find the area of this. And I'll show you the solution. So the hint here is draw an altitude from the vertex to the base of the isosceles triangle. And I'd like you to, if, you're, if you didn't do it yet, I'd like you to figure out the area with this new hint. And remember, we know that in an isosceles triangle, when we drop an altitude to the base, we have congruent triangles. So this is a perpendicular bisector right here. So those two are congruent. So try to figure out the area there. Well, we have the base. We're just looking for the height. And this base measures 11. And we know since these, this is bisected, that each half must be 5.5. And if we look at the picture, we have an angle here, this base angle. This is an adjacent side, and this is an opposite side. So we can really apply the tangent ratio here. So the tangent of that angle is h over 5.5. Apply the cross product. I mean, plug this in our calculator 5.5 times the tangent of 71.45 degrees. So we get this number, and we run it to the nearest tenth, we get about, well, it's around at the very end, make sure we don't make a rounding error. And we end up with about 90.1 square units. So to do this on the calculator, you could take the previous answer, store that as a variable if you'd like, let's make it x, and just plug in the rest of the formula. So 1 half times 11, but instead of uh, this quantity, the 5.5 tangent of that angle, just use x. And that's how you can get that answer. You could type in the whole thing if you want, just a little shortcut. In this lesson, we learned how to find the area of a triangle with trigonometry, specifically uh, with this formula for when we have two sides and the included angle, and also how to use the tangent ratio to figure out the height of an isosceles triangle. Thank you for watching this video.